Wow. I mean, I didn't see that, obviously, because I was in my bed, like most of us, <laughs> yes. but you did. Yeah. Um, and Camilla got it with both barrels, didn't she? Hasn't she just? I mean, bodies left in the streets, talking about her being the villain, the other woman. You saw Anderson Cooper's perplexed uh, sort of vision on his face. It's just... I mean, where do we start here? I mean, uh, the, the, the catalogue of allegations and uh, mudslinging for, to, from Harry to his family is just extraordinary. But and, he says uh, he, he hasn't, that's the thing. Well, if again, I mean, so, so Tom Bradbury said to him yesterday about him yeah, being yeah, scathing yeah. towards mm -hmm. Camilla. I mean, the evidence is there for all to see. And he reacts almost recoiled in, recoiled in horror, saying, oh, I haven't been scathing, I've just told the truth. Yes. Um, again, I mean, it, it's, it's very, very hard to see what Harry's uh, tact is here, because he talks about unwillingness of recollection from his family. Uh, he talks about the fact that he, he wants to sit down with them, he wants them back. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's nigh on impossible at the moment. Especially as, you know, Charles is going to be very protective of his wife, of mm. course he is, in the way that Harry's very protective of, of his. What really struck me, and it's in a lot of the front pages this morning, this whole row over, remember in the Oprah Winfrey interview, um, when Meghan talked about there was somebody in the royal family that had asked about the, what sort of colour their baby would be, the colour of their skin. And that, I remember, that got a huge backlash. Of course it did. Mm. But he seems to be backtracking on that now. He says they, were, he didn't, they weren't racist well, at all. Well, he did. And, they, and again, racist. Tom asked him uh, uh, about a pointed reference uh, about the, the, the issues that they raised in that Oprah Winfrey interview, mm. talking about how dark their Archie's skin would be because of uh, Meghan's biracial mm. heritage. And he says, well, that wasn't racist. Let's listen to yes, what he yeah. said, actually. I, did did Meghan ever mention that they were racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, Archie's skin colour. There was concern about his skin colour. Right. Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. Right. So, you again, don't going, mean... going back to yeah. the difference between what yeah. my understanding is, because okay. of my own experience, the difference between racism and unconscious bias, the two things are different. But once it's been acknowledged or pointed out to you as an individual or as an institution that you have unconscious bias, you therefore have an opportunity to learn and grow from that. But they could have said that at the time. Well, let's take it you that know. there are two different things, racism and a conscious sure. bias, and let's say that we, we agree with Harry on that point. Mm -hmm. The very fact that everybody had then uh, made accusations that there was a royal racist, that the royal family were guilty of racism, um, carried on for, for nearly two years. Yeah. And the fact that now Harry is just saying, well, I didn't mean that, he had ample opportunity at any juncture to step in and clarify. Sure. Now, we've already had the fact that he's talking about accountability. Well, I think that that accountability had to have come from mm. him at that Is that, that not maybe in a way he's thinking, well, why should I say anything? Because they never supported me. In his head, he, he's, he really does believe, and, and that's what he, he thinks, that nobody ever stood up for him. I'm, so maybe he doesn't want to stand up for them. Is Interesting. Sure, yeah. You know, there was all that row with Lady Hussey mm. at the event that Camilla was hosting, um, where, where Lady Hussey asked a lady again and again and again where she was from. And he said, oh, no, we, we don't have a problem with her. You know, both of them don't well, have a problem with her. Well, it's interesting, because, I mean, La Lady, Susan, that at the time yeah, well. Lady Susan Hussey was one of the Queen's closest confidants, yes. 60 years by her side, and she was actually sort of put, uh, put alongside Meghan to... In ingratiate herself with uh, with royal life um and the fact that, that he says well megan and i love her we mm. think we definitely know she didn't mean it uh, i don't know whether that sort of complicates issues because lady mm. susan has has already apologized for the language she used she said she was going to learn from it and it just sort of kind of muddies the waters for a wee bit but maybe it's a wee bit of an olive branch you'd mm. like to think so but william did have to sort of say my family is very much not racist yes, and he looked yeah. Fuming, yeah, fuming as as you would expect um no reaction from the palace yeah. I mean... The right strategy. I think so, because oh, okay. it, there's been so much said at, uh, over the interview and through the book. Um, yeah. I can't imagine we would get a reaction at all over any of this. I'll tell you, the only person, we've said this before, haven't we? The only member of the royal family who must be very grateful to Harry is Prince Andrew. So it takes all the headlines <laughs> yes, away from him, doesn't does, it? And yeah. it takes, takes the heat off him all of the time. But what about that relationship that Harry has got with his dad and with his brother? Because um, he's talked about that. It, it seems... Um, Here's what he said, what happened between them after Prince Philip's funeral. 
Gosh, that's extraordinary. And I'm, I think I'm not the only one that thinks he sounds like Gordon Ramsay, or is that just me? <laughs> well, you know, that sort of delivery? I mean, I know that's very the relevant. The delivery is, is it's, fantastic, it's quite... actually, and the drama within it. Yeah. I mean, just carrying on from what he says, that it was only used in crisis. That He code then goes word? on to say, I didn't believe him. And that shows you the, the gulf of their relationship and how fractured this, uh, the, you know, the two boys have, have become. And it's it, an overwhelming sense of sadness throughout no, the whole really interviews, the book. Um, uh, a man who says that he's very happy, mm. but I think uh, it's, it's pretty evident that he's, he's just very lost. He looks so sad there. Yeah, it's pretty, it's crest, crestfallen. I, I mean, know he does. He looks the, really, the, the, really upset. But again, he says that the ball is in their court. 100%, I believe, reconciliation is on the cards. It's very, very difficult to see how that happens at the moment. I mean, mm. talking about whether he'll be here for the King's coronation. He says the door is always open. Perhaps things will happen, but I think it, 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 it needs to have a big period of time before that happens because there's been an awful lot to unpack for the royal yeah. family. It seems to me it's all happened far too quickly. Yeah. Everybody just needed to sort of step back a wee bit. Yeah, well, he talks about, about these, these memoirs have been in the pipeline for two years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. as soon as they left, he was working on it. And we saw that from the right. Netflix documentary with all the videos yeah. taking place. So, you know, can they can they trust him if he comes back? Um, I, well, that's, that's very interesting. Thinking, no. You can watch the whole of that interview, by the way, the Anderson Cooper yes. one, which happened in the middle of the night. But you can watch it later on on ITVX if you want to, to catch up with that. For the moment, Russell, thank you very much.